the last known location. These are the exact GPS coordinates of where Robert Fisher's forerunner was found. And we know surrounding this area, there are caves. We're about a mile away from the border of the Native American reservation. And we know Robert's dog, Blue, was found running around his car. But that's the last known piece of evidence. Other than that, nobody really knows what happened after that. A lot of times it's the simplest answer is the answer. Fire. April 10th, 2001. We got the call for a house fire. The beginning of a notorious piece of Arizona history. What comes to mind when I say Robert Fisher? I can't use that kind of language on TV. It was 8.30 in the morning. The Fisher family's Scottsdale home exploding into flames with wife Mary, 12-year-old daughter Brittany, and 10-year-old son Bobby inside. Now retired, T.J. Duran was one of the lead detectives on the case and instantly found something was very wrong. We're like, I think we have a homicide here. A natural gas line had been cut and accelerant spread throughout the house and over the three dead bodies to cause the explosion. But the fire didn't kill Mary, Brittany and Bobby. He slit their throats while they were sleeping in bed. He slit his wife's throat. And then the FU shot was the bullet in the head. Instantly, the search was on for the only person missing, husband and dad, Robert Fisher. We advise anybody who, who uh, may come into contact with him to just be cautious. And there were pictures of him the night before the fire at a nearby ATM. He took out $280. That's an odd amount. It is. And it's not much. Right. What's your insight on that? My personal thought, the ATM was um, what I'll call a breadcrumb to, to us, to say that I'm not there, um, I'm smarter than you, I got away. John Heinzelman is the lead detective on the case now. He says Robert likely had a 12 hour start ahead of authorities. At that point, there was no other suspect. Robert Fisher was it. But how and why could he do this? I know that Robert and Mary had some problems. Was he controlling? He was definitely controlling. Lori Greenback was good friends with the Fishers. Her daughter, best friends with Brittany. Mary also worked for Lori's company. But despite a rocky marriage, Lori couldn't believe police were suspicious of Robert. They think Robert did this. And to my husband and I, we're like, there is no way. As the days after the fire went on, Lori's thoughts changed. And then they found the car. Miles away in the woods near Young, Arizona, Robert's forerunner was found a week later with his dog, Blue, guarding it. But no Robert. This area out here is so vast. You could walk 100 yards in any direction and get lost from the place that you started. But Lori says Robert knew this area like the back of his hand, even in the dark. One week before the fire, Robert had taken Lori's husband up camping and riding quads. That remote location is where his car was ultimately found. It was the same area that your husband yep. had been? Yep right where they'd been. So my husband thinks now he was up there scouting it while they were camping. He will be working through the evening. Authorities searched nearby caves, no sign of him. But the two detectives say one place was never searched. The area where the car was found or the forerunner was found is less than a mile from the Apache uh, Indian Reservation and Indian te and territory and uh, that is strictly no hunting, no, uh, no trespassing area. Why at the time did Scottsdale PD not talk to the tribe about searching that area? I, to be honest with you, Brian, I, I couldn't answer that. TJ remembers the haunting phone call he got right after they found the forerunner. I got a call from a couple that was actually up there a few days before we found the truck and they were on the old young road. The two saw a man walking toward the highway. And as she passed them, she looked at her husband and said, that looks like Robert Fisher. So he walked out of there. For years, tips poured in. To this day, they still do. 
In 2004, a man in Canada was taken into custody with uncanny similarities to Robert Fisher. He had the missing tooth. He had the back scar from the surgery that Robert Fisher had years prior when he was in the Navy. But his fingerprints did not match Roberts. Can you change your fingertips? You can't change fingertips. Fingerprints are life. No tip or lead has ever checked out. Almost two decades later, time has gone on, but Lori's thoughts are raw as ever. If Mary had ever had any idea, uh, she would have been out of there. And we loved her and the kids. Crazy. After all this time, I was still painful. Which brings us back to John and TJ, the former and current detectives on this case, and that question. Do you think Robert Fisher is dead or alive? He went off into the woods and, and committed suicide. Do you believe Robert Fisher is dead or alive? I lean that he's still alive. And if he is, for TJ, the dread of danger looms. Let's say he is with somebody. Now he needs to leave again. What's he gonna do? But that's just it. The unknown is reality. Maybe this is the best we have, knowing he did it and never finding him again. Will authorities ever search the Indian reservation? And can somebody live off of $280 and never be seen or caught? for 18 years. Dead or alive, until we find remains or Robert Fisher is found, this mystery continues, but his story ends right here.